just talk about your taste buds. Interesting okay. acids and bases in your taste buds. Not just acids, acids uh, and bases in your taste buds. You've got a tongue. This is a tongue. This is sound. What are you doing with a tongue? Hold on. Hold on. Okay. Uh, that's gross. Yeah, okay. No. All right. So that's a tongue, if, yeah. you, if you didn't know that. And you probably know that you have uh, things called uh, taste, taste buds. buds. Yeah. yeah. The yeah. little bumps on your tongue. And the little yeah. bumps on the, t t on the back of your tongue, those are the bitter taste buds. Yeah. And now, the, we're going to kind of generalize here. Yeah. They're not completely isolated to these areas, but the general idea is that they're kind of more concentrated in these areas. Yeah. You can taste essentially yeah. four different types of things with your tongue. Sweet. And then that's the tip of your tongue-ish. It's sort of an ish thing. And over here on, I forget, where's the, where's the sour versus yeah, they're the salty? All, I don't remember. They're on the sides, both on of them. On the sides yeah. are your salty and bitter. So let's just say, for the sake of Mr. Bergman, you're wrong. Yeah. This is the salty, <laughs> and then this is the sour. Yeah, and again, these are generalizations. They're not completely isolated to these locations. Yeah, but they're sort of ish. Yeah. Yep. Now, what is it that your taste bud does? Yeah, well, when we talk about acids and bases, we mentioned a minute ago that acids are sour. So when your sour taste buds are going off, what they've done is they've detected the presence of hydrogen ions. If you have hydrogen ions, you have acid. So it goes, mm, sour, hydrogen ion, acid. So think of it this way. Um, if you've got a, uh, in, my, in my house, I've got what's called a carbon monoxide tester, mm -hmm. CO, carbon monoxide. And the job of that device is to sniff all day long, all night long, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, for carbon monoxide. If carbon monoxide gets you know, burned from my furnace, it's not good to have carbon monoxide in your house, nope. um, then it beeps and makes a horrible, god-awful noise that says, uh, get out of your get house. Get out of your house. Yes. All right, essentially, that's what your uh, sour taste buds are doing, is all day long, 24-7, they are waiting for a hydrogen ion to come across them. When it does, it sends a signal to your brain saying, sour, sour, acid. Yeah. Yep. All right. Now, um, and so it's just a, a specific detector for right. a specific chemical. Right. Exactly. So the bitter ones are actually detecting bases. Now, um, they but, don't. They don't really detect hydroxides. They're actually detecting things that have yeah. nitrogen in them. Yeah. And things with nitrogen in them tend to be basic. Yeah. So that's that's really what they're detecting. They're detecting there. bases, but it, right. it's not quite as specific. It's looking for a particular chemical right. that's related to the chemical to the that makes bases. Right. Exactly. Hydroxides, but it's yeah. not exactly a hydroxide tester. And frankly, the same things. So the sweet is looking for chemicals um, that detect sweet. This is the most complex one I understand yeah. uh, biologically because there's so many things that can taste sweet. Yep. And then the salty one is actually well. We're at it, yeah. is detecting either sodium ions or potassium ions. Yep. So those are the two things it's looking for. So the ones that are sort of the pure ones, they're looking for just a very few chemicals, is the salty tester and the sour tester. Yeah, the sweet and the base ones, uh, the sweet and bitter are pretty more, a lot more complex. An interesting thing, too, about the bitter while we're at it is that I understand that the bitter taste buds, you can detect like a thousand times less concentration than, say, the rest of them. That would make sense. They actually have a compound out there called Bitrex, and they put it in things like antifreeze yeah. and cleaning compounds so that like if a little kid ta uh, tastes it, mm -hmm. it'll taste horribly bitter and they'll instantly spit it out so they don't go you know, drink in your drain out or anything yeah. like that. Because one of the, the dangers, of course, is that most bases are, um, more likely at least, to be uh, some kind of a poisonous yeah. uh, substance. And so your body has adapted so that yep. it, it has it goes, a thousand bitter, bitter, that means poison, get it, out. get it out of here. So you've got kind of a, it's a gatekeeper to say, uh, you don't want that in your body. Yep. And you don't. Nope. So hey, we've said this already, um, and very, very important, the most important thing in this podcast, acids make... Hydrogen ions. Hydrogen ions in water. Now, yep. let's talk about what a hydrogen ion is. When I say H positive, if you think about that, that means there is, what, a hydrogen mm -hmm. has one proton, you know, because it weighs one and has a atomic number of one. Yep. It has a zero neutrons. Now, yep. when you have the positive one charge, that means it's lost, lost an electron. one electron, so yeah. it's zero electrons. Right, so it's just a proton. That's so all it is. important to understand that, yeah, a hydrogen ion is a proton by itself. Yeah, and sometimes we call them that, that we'll say, a instead of saying donor. a hydrogen ion, we'll say a proton donor. Yeah. Yep, but we're talking about the same thing. And bases make hydroxide ions. We talked about yep. that. Sometimes directly, sometimes indirectly. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. But ultimately, you get some hydroxides. Yeah. And we'll learn about the direct-indirect thing a little bit later. Yep. We've already done this, but it's probably good to kind of review it. Mm -hmm. How do we name acids? So if something ends in eight, then it becomes an ick. Yeah, so like if you have the nitrate ion. So if, let's say I have, now actually we should make an important point. Acids always have H, H positive, hydrogen right. ion. So when you have the nitrate ion, which is NO3 negative mm one, -hmm. And you're going to mix that with the hydrogen positive ion. Yep. That's HNO3. You've got to have that H in it, or it's not an acid. Right. So this is nitrate becomes nitric. Nitric acid. H becomes ic. 
Yeah, this is just a review. Yeah. Actually, you know, nitric, but nitric acid. Right, exactly. the word acid. Maybe you want to think about the word acid as being the H positive part. Yeah. Um, one other thing we should mention is that um, for an acid to be an acid, it actually has to be dissolved in water. That is correct. So if you have HCl, which is hydrochloric acid, if it's just floating around as a gas, we call it hydrogen chloride gas. But as soon as you dissolve it in water, it becomes yeah. hydrochloric acid. So technically, acid. it has to be AQ. Everybody right. has to be AQ. It has to be AQ. Yeah. Yep. And so let's do an example of the night. Let's say we do sulfite. Maybe? Sulfite, sure. Sulfite is, if you recall from your polyatomic ions, is SO3 negative 2. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, to make it an acid, you've got to re react with H positive. Right. So that's H. 2SO3. Now again, it has to be aqueous, so let's go ahead and throw that in there. Yep. And um, his Sul name is an ite, sulfite. Yep. So sulfite becomes sulfurous acid. It's not sulfous acid. We put the er back in there from sulfur. Sulfurous? Yeah. Sulfurous. Sulfurous. Well, I've sulfurous. always called it sulfurous. Oh, well, yeah, different yeah. pronunciation. I don't know, whatever. Yeah. The West Coast I think it's sulfurous. Thing. I think it's sulfurous. Yeah. All right, ide. Uh, how about an ide like cyanide? That's a nasty element. You never want that. Mess with that. Um, okay. H positive. So HCN would be an example of an acid that has cyanide mm -hmm. in it. And it becomes an hydro something. Cyanic. So this would be hydro cyanic acid. Right. Cyanide, hydrocyanic. I keep adding the word acid. Remember, think of the yep. word acid as basically being the H positive part. I, I know the H positive part typically goes first. I don't know, it's just backwards. Deal with it. <laughs> yeah. So I believe that's... That's review. Oh, There's some more examples. You know, we yeah, we kind of did examples. We did enough. You've done plenty so of these. Want maybe one go the other direction. Okay, Let's say sure. I've got H3PO4. Okay. What's his name? Let's well, let's split it up. We've got three hydrogen ions, and then we have... So that's that H positive. That's that word acid, right? Yep. And then we got And then PO4. we have PO4, so that uh, has a minus three charge. That's the phosphate ion. So that's phos... Eight. So if eight becomes. So let's ick. go back and look at our table just yeah. in case they might have forgot. Okay. And eight. Eight becomes ick. Ick. So phosphate becomes phosphoric. Phosphoric acid. Acid. Yeah. Don't forget the word acid. All we right. should probably do the other direction. Should I have another place? I don't. But let's um, do it right here. Just, what if I have a name? Um, let's pick one, Mr. Sam. Pick one. Let's do um, Some weird, one. weird one. How about hypochlorous acid? Hypo. Chlorous acid. All right, so we want to find the formula of hypochlorous acid. It's an us acid. There's this yep. hypo thing. That's kind of weird. Yeah. Uh, but if I go back to my table, yep. it ends in I don't in see anything us. with a hypo here. I see a hydro, but that's not hypo. So but I us, see us came from ice. Right. All right, so I see the word acid, so mm -hmm. I'm going to think H positive. Mm -hmm. And it's hypochlorous, so that would be hypochlorite. Yep. So hypo. Chlorite. Well, did you just look on your poly ion? Mm -hmm. And of course, that is CLO, o or OCL. CL. It's OCL. Two ways of writing it. Yeah. OCL minus negative one. Yep. And those charges do cancel out to zero. Now you got to play the charge games. So that's just HOCl. Okay. All right. I think we're done. All right. Bye.